Am I, am I centered? Welcome once again to South Florida Bible College uh, to a taste of SFBC. My name is Jamil Aganor. I'm the VP of enrollment here at South Florida Bible College. Uh, for all of those who have been with us for the past three weeks, thank you so much. Um, it's been a good ride. Today is the last day of our four-week journey of uh, just sample classes that we've been doing for the past four Wednesdays. Now, today we have a very special treat for you. It's going to be uh, on entrepreneurship with Dr. Sharon Ritchie Brown. I'm excited for this. She's a dynamic speaker. She's a great teacher, a great professor here at South Florida Bible College. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, before we get into the lecture tonight, I want to uh, tell you once again, as I always do, if you are interested in taking classes here at South Florida Bible College, it is open to you to just go on our website at sfbc.edu and just go ahead and click on more info or you can click on the apply now button right there on our front page and one of our enrollment advisors will reach out to you and uh, we'll carry a conversation um, with you up until you matriculate into our classes. Um, we are looking forward to getting to know you also. Also, before we begin, we wanna talk about this $50 gift card uh, that we're giving out for tonight. We've already given out two over the past three weeks and um, for those who have won their $50 gift cards, please look forward to, um, you know, Gary reaching out to you uh, sometime next week and uh, you'll be re um, getting those gift cards by mail. Um, so if you want to enter your name in for tonight's uh, drawing, go ahead and put your name and email address in the comment section uh, of whatever platform you're on, whether that's the YouTube or the Facebook. So put your name and email address in that comment section and We'll mark that in and we'll put you into the drawing for the $50 uh, gift card. And at the end of the night, we'll call out the winner. So without you having to hear me for too much longer, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce our speaker, uh, Sharon Ritchie Brown, Dr. Sharon Ritchie Brown. Uh, wherever you are, I know we can't hear you, but go ahead and give her a round of applause. All right. So here she comes. Good evening. Good evening to you, and thank you for joining us. Our class this evening is going to be on entrepreneurship, and when I teach that class, I usually use this book. It's called Entrepreneurial Small Business, and it's by Jerome Katz and Richard Green. Most of the material today is going to be coming from this text. So let us begin. What is entrepreneurship? Well, it's derived from the word entrepreneur. And what that means is that it's a group of individuals or one individual or two that decides to take all the risk as well as all the rewards associated with starting a new business. Now this business can start anywhere. This business can start in your, in your home, it can start in your garage. Some people start the business from their car. I'm pretty sure you're aware of an, two individuals that have started business from their garage. And those two individuals are well known. They are the founders of Apple, Steve Job and Jobs and uh, 
uh, Steve Wozniak. There are lots and lots of entrepreneurs out there that do not have the notoriety or the fame, the fame of these two individuals, but they still exist and they make money as long as they're doing the things that are required to be profitable in their business. So I'm going to talk to you about one such individual. This individual's name is uh, Paul Scheiter, and he is the owner and founder of Hedgehog Leatherworks. And that came about because Paul, from a child, enjoyed working in the outdoors. He liked to, he liked to go hiking, he liked the woods. And as he got older, he determined that I'm not going to carry all these things with me when I'm going on my trips. He decided I need to have a good knife. So at the time he was attending the university, and what he did was to scrimp and save, and he bought himself a high-end knife costing $300. When the knife came, he loved it. He thought it was all that he wanted it to be. But the sheath for the knife, that thing that you see on your screen, that he had to put his knife in when he's done using it, he felt it was not up to par. He thought it was inferior, it was made of plastic, it was uncomfortable to wear. So what he set out to do was to make a better sheath. And so, if you look at your screen, it says there is a need and a demand. So Paul felt that there was a, de there, there was a need for this type of sheath. So he solicited his friends, he solicited his teachers, he solicited uh, mentors to assist him in making this sheath. Today, Paul is one of the leading makers, his, his company, Hedgehog Leatherworks, is one of the leading makers of this sheath. By the time he left school, by the time he left the university, he had progressed enough to go directly into that business. And I would like to let you know that while he was at the university, his course was entrepreneurship. So let's go back to my other screen before I go too far. So as you see, there is, he established a need. He was innovative. He had mentors. He launched that business from his dorm room. He did building and implementing and refining this tool so that today this is what it looks like. So I'm, I'm sure you know that a lot of people say, you know, 90% of businesses fail in the first year. I would like to categorically tell you that that is false. That is a myth, okay? This is what is true. Only 20% of small business fail in the first year. 69% of businesses are still going after two years. 51% are still in business after five years. 34% make it past 10 years, and a little over a quarter make it past 15 years. So we have, we're going to dispel that myth that only 20%, you know, 20 of businesses fail in the first year. Let's look at the importance of small businesses to the United States economy. Now, small business is about 45% of the United States economic activity, and that's up from 32% in 2020. And this is rising, and this is according to the Small Business Association uh, statistics in 2020. Small businesses make up 99.9% .9 of all firms. According to the SBA, new jobs created between 1995 and 2020 were small businesses, and that accounted for 62% or about 13 million jobs. Large enterprises, only about 7.9 million jobs. In 2022, 
65% of small businesses are in fact profitable. So, what I want you to do is to think about those numbers. And my next slide is talking to you about, being, about avoiding being a 20%er, those businesses that fail in the first year. When we look at Paul Scheiter, he had a feeling about something. He had an idea that he could make something better than what already existed. He had a plan and he enlisted help. I want to pause here because a lot of times when young people go into business or even older folks, they don't solicit any help. So this is just to let you know that help does help, okay? You, in, in, when you're doing a small business, there is a, a phrase called do well and do good. So in this particular case, when you're starting your small business, you want to make a profit. That's why people go into business. But you're, you're, you're wanting to make a profit should not disallow you from doing well in your business. And by doing well, I'm going to go to the next slide and elaborate on what I'm talking about. So let's look at this slide. So as I said before, he had a feeling, an idea. He had an innovation. Then he had a plan. Planning involves action, and they both work hand in, in hand. The right plan backed up by the right action leads to success. But this here, help does help, is very important. You seek help. So if you ask your Uncle Niger to lend you $1,000, you want to make sure that you pay it back. That's where do well and do good comes, okay? Don't just borrow the money to assist you in your business, and when you're making money, you forget to pay the people that lent it to you, not because they're, their, they, you're their, they're your relatives. So do well and do good. Solicit help. And that, is, that goes far in making sure that your business starts out on the right foot, that you're not a 20 percenter. So I'm going to talk to you about a gentleman that not a lot of people know about. His name is Ed Katmo. And you know, just by saying the name, you may not know who he is. But Mr. Katmo makes movies like Toy Story, like Finding Dora, like Ratatouille, like Bugs Life. I'm pretty sure a lot of you will recognize those movies, though you may not recognize the makers of those, of those movies, and that is Ed Catmull. Ed Catmull is a, is a computer scientist, and he is responsible for making all those movies. But one of the things that he does in his business, or that he did in his business when he just started out, was to take a back seat and allow the individuals that work for him to get all the credit. So. You may not have known who he was, but you know his movies and the individuals that were responsible for making those movies get the credit. In his organization, what happens when he makes a movie, if I am one of his employees, and during the time the movie was being made, I had a baby. When that movie is completed, my child's name is on that credit for the movie. And that is significant. In a, in a number of ways. And one of the ways is significant is that I feel empowered in an employment like that. I feel that I am recognized. And not only am I recognized, but my family is as well. My daughter, who was not born when the movie was ma being made, and my husband is going to be on the credits for those movies. Another thing that Katmal does is that he encourages conflict. A lot of times we don't want to be involved in conflict in the workplace, in conflict in your organization, conflict in your small firm, because you think that conflict is not good for the company. He was innovative in making sure that he did not get involved in conflict. So in one of these movies that was made, what he did was 
there was a, a, a director and there was a person who was responsible for the animation. In one of those scenes, the person responsible for the animation did not agree with a particular, with a particular stance that was being made during that animation of one of the characters. And he argued with the person who was the director. And there was a big, you know, big argument. You know, the person felt that it was going to detract. The animator felt it was going to detract from his, 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 his scene. And the, the, the director felt, well, you know, I don't want it in the scene. I don't think it brings anything to the scene. And Catmull stayed away. He didn't get involved. And he told them, make sure you work it out so that when the movie is done, it is a good movie. And so this lesson is to just let you know that you have to manage conflict instead of avoiding it. And that's one of the, the things that made Ed Cottmull so innovative. He did not shy away from conflict. He managed it. And so this particular movie was made. The animator agreed that he should take out a little part of the scene. And the director agreed with him. And the movie was made. So innovation is important. And you don't have to follow anyone's pattern to be innovative. You can create your own. So these are some of the traits that are needed for you to be a successful entrepreneur. You have to have the passion for this work. You have to believe in what you're making. You have to believe in what you're producing, and you have to have passion for it. You have to have perseverance, because this is important. You can't fail today and decide, I am not going to do this, OK? You have to have a balance of promotion and prevention. And I'm going to explain what that means. So in terms of balance and promotion, we tend to have more than one internal focus. We have a promotional focus, and this focus in, is intent on making sure that whatever gains we make is maximized. We tend to want to, make, take, to take many risks to maximize the gain. This can be reckless and can cause issues with your business. The other focus is the prevention focus, where we don't want to take, we don't want to risk anything we want to make sure we hold all the resources together, and we don't want to take any risk. You have to have a balance with, between both of those focuses so that at one, at one point you can take some risk, though not too much, and another point you don't want to take any risk. You have to have a balance. If you want to achieve the best results, you have to have a balance between these two. And I'm going to give you an example. So years ago, I used to be a lending person. I did loans for a credit union that I worked with. And the credit union was one of those credit unions that, you know, they, didn't, they were not good with risk. They didn't like to take risk. So the majority of the people that they loaned the funds to were people who had excellent credit, 802 score, 756 score, that type of score. Now, what do you think happens when you lend money to individuals who have maintained excellent credit over the years? You don't make any money. Because if you have an 802 score, chances are you pay your loan off before it's time. Or you never pay late. Or you just, if, you're, if your bill is due on the 15th, you pay it on the 3rd. Now, Let's look at another individual who is having things rough, doesn't pay necessarily on time. Not that they want to, but they don't have a, a 802 credit score. They have a 650. If you don't take the risk of lending that individual funds, then you're not going to make money on the individual that pays their credit card without fail for the five years that they have the card on time or before time. So that's what I mean in terms of having a balance. You have to have good credit scores, and you have to have in-between credit scores. We want to avoid the ones that have bad credit altogether. 
Okay? Let's move on. So this is an example of the individuals that preserved. When we talked about persever persevered, I'm sorry. When we talk about perseverance in the, first, in the previous slide. Thomas Edison, he tested about 800 pieces of material before he finally found the one for the light bulb. Kate Spade is a designer of handbags, and she started out making handbags. At one point, she paid $4,000 to get a booth and to display her purses. No one came and bought any of her purses. She did not even make enough money to, to pay for the booth. Uh, but she persevered, and today, she, well, she subsequently died, unfortunately, but she was able to sell her business. In 1999, Neiman Marcus acquired 56% in the Skate Spade business, $33.6 million. Liz Claiborne later brought the company in 2006 for $124 million. And in 2017, it ultimately sold to Coach for a whopping $2.4 billion. That's an example of someone who persevered. She preserved, so to speak. Then Google, we all know what Google does. You know, they're in charge of artificial intelligence, you know, search engine, technology, e-commerce. They started in their garage. The person who owns Google started in their garage. Amazon, you can get pretty much everything from Amazon. When I came here as an immigrant to the United States in 1994, Amazon only sold books. So you have to persevere if you want to be an entrepreneur. Now, who wants to be an entrepreneur? Notice I didn't say who wants to be a millionaire. You think you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Are you interested in learning about entrepreneurship? Join our class. I am the professor teaching that class in the fall, and I guarantee you, you will have a good time. Thank you for listening. I'm so happy that you guys were able to join us once again here at uh, South Florida Bible College. <laughs> we thank you so much for um, uh, being here with us. And uh, we want to go into this moment of, um, <coughs> excuse me, we want to go into this moment. the $50 gift card, and um, we didn't have anybody who put in any entries for the $50 gift card, so unfortunately, we don't have um, anyone to give that to, but if you are still interested in uh, applying for uh, South Florida Bible College, please uh, go ahead and go to sfbc.edu and go ahead and put your, uh, uh, click the, the button on the website, and you will be able to uh, plug in with us and connect with one of our enrollment advisors and they'll reach out to you. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. It's always a pleasure to have you join us and we will be doing more uh, events like this uh, in the future, so please look out for it. Again, my name is Jamil Aganor and let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Father, thank you so much once again for uh, this moment that we got to at least learn a little bit more about the gifts, Lord, that you give to people, Lord, the gift of business, the gift of entrepreneurship, Lord. Um, we thank you for professors like Sharon uh, Ritchie Brown, who's able to uh, study and be able to bring this kind of education and this knowledge uh, for us, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to 
uh, bless everything that we're doing here. I pray that you would um, reach in us, Lord God, and develop us and grow us, Lord God, in areas where you've gifted us. We give you thanks and praise, and we bless everyone who's been watching. I pray that you would continue to um, bless them as they journey uh, through this life with you. Give you thanks and praise again in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you next time.